Ah, flip fluids. The one simulation technique I love to hate. Not because of the results. Actually, I quite like the look of them. It's just I have issues with the speed of the simulation and particularly with setting it up in Houdini, at least until Houdini 19.5. Not that the speed issues had been addressed, flip still remains flip and thus allows you to watch Dr. Shivago or the whole original Star Wars trilogy while you're caching out your sim files, but it's been lots and lots easier to set up in Houdini 19.5 thanks to its SOPification. That means it is available now in Houdini's SOP context. So let's have a look at it by in Houdini just dropping down a geo node and diving in here. And in here, when you right click or when you hit tab, you can see we've got now this flip sub menu here where we can see all the available flip nodes in SOP. The central one being the flip solver, along with a bunch of sources and sinks, as well as a few auxiliary nodes and a few pre-configured setups. And instead of looking at the documentation and who actually likes reading the help files, going through those initial configurations here helps a lot. So let's start out with the configure flip. Flip not only being the name of the simulation, but also of our rubber toy here. And that's what Houdini by default drops down. So let's sort this a bit. And what we can see here, we've got our rubber toy, the test geo that's been subdivided once. And then we're going to set the point color to the same color as the texture here that's been mapped on it, just by linking it to this rubber toy's texture here in the attribute from map node like this. Then we just set a viscosity depending on the Y position of each of those points with the upper portion of the points being much more viscous than the lower portion of the points. And that's our source. And this source goes into this flip boundary here. Flip boundary is the same node that is used to set up all all these sinks and sources here. It's just this flip boundary with different presets. So the flip boundary node can be configured both as for sourcing and for sinking fluid into our simulation. However, to simulate what we need is a flip container. So the very first thing we're always dropping down is this flip container here. And in here we can configure the particle separation that also dictates the particle size and the resolution of our simulation, as well as the grid scale. Typically our grid is twice as big as our particle separation. Then we can set our implicit bounds for our domain. We can either wire in a geometry here to set these bounds, or we can just enter a maximum allowable size for our simulation domain. That means the maximum dimensions that our simulation can have and its center. And I'll increase those to 20 by 20 by 20 in this case. Also, you've got settings for gravity here and then down here, a few drop downs for density, surface tension and viscosity. In the density, we can see that varying density currently is unchecked and we're later gonna enable that. However, for now, to allow for tiny bit quicker simulation times, we just leave it unchecked. We don't have the surface tension activated here. Viscosity is checked with a varying viscosity enabled. And then under the attributes, we add one custom attribute that is the color CD of our particles. And this custom attribute as CD is not set up by default when you're dropping down this flip tank container. So keep that in mind. All right, so we created this flip tank here. You can see it's maximum boundaries here with that blue box. And then we use the flip boundary to source our rubber toy into the simulation as our fluid source. In here, the flip boundary is set up to be active only on the first frame using this expression $FF equals to one, and its type is set to source and not sync. And then finally, there's already the flip solver and we could do without those last three nodes for now. So let's just drag them down here and ignore them. And this is our main setup. So in here in the flip solver, a bunch of things I wanna point out first, you can increase or decrease the time scale to your liking to slow down or speed up the simulation. Also, you can increase the sub steps by dialing in either the global substeps or minimum and maximum substeps to allow the solver to choose how many substeps it spends on a certain part of your simulation. Also in the cache memory, I want to increase that a bit, got enough RAM so that we can cache our simulation into RAM here without overriding frames. Waterline here has options if you, for example, want to fill a container to a certain level to start with in your simulation. In this case, we don't want that. Collisions dictates how the particles behave when they are colliding with any colliders, of which we will create one in a second. And also down here, you see that there's a ground plane enabled so that when I hit play, my rubber toy here collides with the ground plane. And you can see due to the varying viscosity, that only the bottom part of the rubber toy actually becomes liquid with the head staying solid. Under the fluid behavior, you can dial in which velocity transfer kernel you want. So there's a swirly and a splashy option in here. And you can dial in your standard default flip settings. For example, receding if you want to have your fluid not exhibit kind of those air pockets. That means areas in which a simulation box will suddenly has very few or none particles. Also with air and compressibility, you can model such things as air bubbles rising up 
for example from a water cooler or some chemical equipment. The enforced particle separation is there to help with maintaining your fluid's volume. So sometimes due to simulation inaccuracies, your particles can become moved very closely together and the particle separation tries to enforce a certain particle distance outside of your standard simulation loops. As for visualization, you can visualize the particles here and the colliders. And if you wouldn't be using any point color as we do, you could colorize them, for example, by their particle speed using this typical water ramp. Finally, under advanced, for the solvers, there are a few options. For example, a narrow band simulation for when you want to simulate water surfaces. So you're only caring about the upper surface of the water and not the body of water that's below it. For example, to solve the pressure with adaptive time stepping, that means letting Houdini allow how many time steps it wants to choose to solve the pressure equations. And the same thing for the viscosity. Be aware that solving the pressure with adaptivity cannot be used with the air and compressibility. So if you want to simulate those rising bubbles, turn that off. And we too, we will run into a situation where we have to turn that off in a moment. But so far, let's leave this at default. And instead of relying on this ground plane here, let's go into the collision tabs here and disable the ground plane by setting it to none and then resetting our simulation to frame zero or to frame one actually. Let's create a collider that we use as kind of a container for the simulation. So let's zoom out and grab anything up to the flip solver and pull that down like this. And in here, I'm gonna drop down a flip collide node, which I'll wire in like this. So you can see the first three inputs will automatically attach to the flip boundary node and the three outputs to the flip solver. And in here on the fourth input, I can input a new collision geometry that will be added to the simulation for the particles to collide with. In our case, I will just build a box. So let's start out using a box like this. Let's just ghost it using the template flag. And then let's increase its size to uniform scale of 10. And let's scale down its X and Z size, maybe to something like this. Let's just set the view flag on this. And then I just want to grab the top surface here and just delete it by hitting delete and that'll attach a blast that deletes this face here. Now I'll use a poly extrude to give this some thickness, which is kind of important for colliders as they will be turned into volumes by default. So in here in the poly extrude, I will just extrude this a tiny bit and then down here, make sure I check output back like this. So I have this container here. Also, let's move this box up a bit, maybe 2.5 units, and then wire this into the flip collider like this. So now if I had the flip solver here, I can see that by default, the collider visualization is turned on and I can see my box has been turned into this voxelized box here. However, that visualization currently disturbs me. So on my flip solver, I'll go to visualization and uncheck the show collision option here. So now I'm left with that. And again, I'll save this and then hit play to simulate this. Okay, that's not too bad. However, when I look at the simulation, now this geometry is split into two parts, one that is very viscous and one that isn't. And also all of the particles have the same density, which prevents this head here from swimming away on top of the other particles. So let's address that. The way we address that is here in the set viscosity here. So instead of that point wrangle here, where we're just making a decision if certain points are above 0.3 and then they're very viscous, or if they are below and then they are not, let's write something a bit more complicated or rather not more complicated, but more tweakable. So let's use a point wrangle here. And instead of wiring the set color into the set viscosity, let's wired through our point wrangle here, and then that goes into our flip boundary. And in our point wrangle, I'm gonna write my own logic by which I can set up not only the viscosity, but also the density of my individual particles. Let's reset the timeline to frame one. And in here, the first thing I wanna do is look up the relative position of my point positions in respect to the bounding box of the whole object. That means, for example, when we look at the Y position, that a point being at the bottom of this object has a relative Y position of zero, and a point at the top of the object has a relative Y position of one. So I'm making sure the point positions along each axis only vary between zero and one. And I can get that. It's a vector storing the relative point positions for X, Y, and Z. Let's call it rel pause. I can get that using one or two functions, namely the rel b box, the relative bounding box, or the relative point bounding box. In this case, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go with the point bounding box and wanna look up my bounding box for my incoming geometry. That is the geometry coming through the first slot, slot with the ID zero. And then I wanna get the relative position of my currently active point that's being processed and its position that I need to feed in here. So V at P. Now I'm gonna extract just the Y component because I wanna remap the Y position to a viscosity. So that should be a float between zero and one. Let's call it Y pause. And it should be equal to our relative positions Y component. So rel pause dot Y. And now finally I can take that and remap it into the viscosity by creating my viscosity attribute and then using the channel ramp, CH ramp to create an interface element which we're gonna call viscosity. 
and this as an input takes the Y position. And if we click this button here, we can create this interface element, which is this single float ramp. And let's also multiply this using another interface element, maybe a float slider, which we're going to call overall amp for overall amplitude. And then just to make sure the viscosity isn't zero anywhere, let's just add some small value to it, 0.1. All right, let's create that other slider as well. Here, the overall amp, and let's set the maximum viscosity to 5 million. That was a good value. You could also set it maybe to 10 million. Again, values I tested out when preparing the setup here. Now, as for this curve here, again, we are taking the positions from the bottom of this object to the top of this object here and remapping those positions into a viscosity value. And I want to tweak those a bit by setting those individual control points here to a B spline and not linear, which allows me to dial in this curve a bit more organically. So I'm going to set one here to 0 0.45 of a value of zero, and then going to 0 0.7 again with a value of zero. And then let's move this up at 0 0.75 to a value of one, and then maybe add another one at 0 0.8. 85 again with a value of one. So now we're telling the simulation to regard most of the lower body of flip here, the rubber toy as being not very viscous, that means very fluid, and the top part here being increasingly viscous, that means increasingly stiff. Let's see if that worked by again setting the view flag on our flip solver here, maybe saving this and then simulating. Okay, let's have a look at this, maybe a bit from the top here, like so, and let's replay that. And lots of stuff happening here that I quite like. However, I mentioned that I wanted this part of the rubber toy that stays stiff to float on top of the other parts of my simulation here. And for that, I would like to make this part here a bit lighter. That means less dense than the lower parts of my initial source, which is this rubber toy here. And again, that can be done in our point wrangle here. Let's just drag this down and maybe minimize this curve here like this. And let's write one more line in here where we can dial in the density. So. Let's draw the density on our individual points. And we're going to use this channel ramp again. And let's call this one density, like this. And in here, again, I want to use the Y position to set the density. And let's also use a, another float slider to set up the overall strength here of the density, of the maximum density, that is. Let's call this one, I don't know, max underscore density like this and create those two interface elements here. So now when I scroll down, I see another float slider here called max density and let's set that to 10,000 like this. And then similarly to what I've done with the viscosity, I can dial in my density depending on its position here. So let's orient ourselves on this viscosity scale here. And again, let's set those individual handles here to be B splines. And in this case, I want to flip this around. So the bottom part here is very dense and the top part is very light. Let's adjust this a bit further by setting another control point here at 0 0.7 and maybe one more at 0 0.4, which goes all the way up and maybe another one at 0 0.55 and one more at 0 0.65, something like this. So we have this steep curve here, which is kind of opposite and cutting into the areas where there's very low viscosity. So we have a high density where there's low viscosity. And now in order for this to work, we have to set up one more thing, which is in our flip tank up here. Namely, under the density here, which I mentioned, we have to check the varying density option here. And now our simulation suddenly breaks. So let's observe which warning comes up here by just clicking on this warning icon here and we can see an error. The adaptive pressure and variable density is not supported together. Also what I mentioned when talking through those settings here in the flip solver under the advanced tab, let's disable the solve pressure with adaptivity. And now my simulation is back and it should be set up in a way that it now regards the different densities on our points. Okay, so fingers crossed again, let's save this and hit play. And after half an eternity of waiting for the simulation to finish and playing solitaire on the side, we can now see this head slightly bobbing in the waves of this fluid here, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we could play a bit further with those settings here, dial in any curve we'd like, maybe use another source geometry than the rubber toy, 
Let's also clean the setup up by deleting the set viscosity that we exchanged with our own point wrangle here. Maybe let's drag down the flip collide and the flip solver to make sure we make clear where our collider is coming from. And then down here we have the additional three standard nodes for meshing your particle surfaces. That is the fluid compress, which does nothing more than actually compressing the data that's coming out of a simulation in order to make for smaller file caches, which we can write out here using the file cache node, and then feeding that into the particle fluid surface node here, which takes care of meshing our particles into a fluid surface, which in this case is configured to take over not only our velocity for motion blur, but also our color CD for rendering. Of course, you can also filter this to get rid of some artifacts and dial in the look of your surface. But that's the overall quick rundown of what working with the new SOP flip solver means, what your standard node trees look like, how you add colliders, and how by manipulating a few point attributes such as viscosity and density, you can direct the look of your simulation. And as always, we are very intrigued to see what you create using this technique. And if you want to learn more about Houdini, Unreal and a bit of Blender, or maybe just plainly want to support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, as it is through the help of our patrons that we can run and tag mice we do. With a very special thank you going out to Important Looking Pirates, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Electric Theater, Pixonic, Random42, Rodeo FX, Side FX, Lusion, Styleframe, and Rific Anadol Studio. Thanks so much for supporting us. And finally, as always, see you next time, and until then, it is cheers and goodbye.